Hey, hey, welcome to Advancing AI, where we talk all things AI and machine learning. Uh, today, we've got something extra special for everyone out there. We are recording a special graph rack series. Uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, why, why use graph racks? How, when do we use graph racks? The architectures of graph racks and even get you started with a couple of notebooks so you can start implementing and exploring graph racks yourself. Now we've got Chris that works at Advancing Analytics as well, who'll be joining me very shortly. And he has been dabbling with graph racks. So he's the guru in terms of talking all graph rack with us. I'm going to have Chris come on very shortly. Hey, Gary. Hey, how are you doing, Chris? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very excited about this series that we have planned. We are time boxing our series to 10 minutes. Exactly, Chris. So we're going to be talking about all the good stuff behind graph rack and even showing people how they can start playing with their own implementation of graph right. Is that right? Yeah, let's dive into it. Let's go. What is graph right? I've heard I've heard this terminology being you know, uh, thrown around knowledge graph rights and graph rights. What is, what's the difference between those two terminologies, Chris? Well, they're exactly the same, Gabby. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, graph rights, they have come together um, from knowledge graphs, which isn't new whatsoever, and RAG, which is fairly new. It's, it's developed quite a lot over the last 12 or so months. Uh, we've got advanced RAG as well, but I'm sure everybody who's dabbling in Gen AI have heard RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. Now, those two come together uh, that forms the graph RAG. RAG. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to, let's just talk about a bit more fundamentals, right? Graph RAG, um, it, it all starts on knowledge graphs. What are knowledge graphs? They're a good representation of information. So you yeah. will see elements called nodes, which are the circles, and you'll see the re the relationships. So the most recent blog I did looked at Kendrick Lamar, popular yeah. rap artist. So we have Kendrick in the middle, and we have anything he's related to on the outside. And we can see on those connections the connection types. So he was awarded a Brit Award. So we can see a node for Brit Award, and we can see Kendrick connected to that node. And I think this is a fantastic way to visualize structured data, right? If you've got like, like you've just shown here, if you've got a node and you wanted to see how it relates to other entities, it's such an effective way to visualize this in terms of knowledge graphs. A knowledge graph has been used in many, many verticals, particularly in the financial services industry, where you do a lot of fraud investigation using knowledge graphs as well. So there's lots of users in terms of where knowledge graph comes into play. Um, RAG then. What is RAG? Now, RAG is fairly new, like we mentioned a couple of minutes ago. Uh, the abbreviation for RAG is Retrieval Augmented Generation. Now, the way um, RAG works is using a large language model that's already been pre-trained. But typically, we would implement RAG where, on our own data set when we don't, when the large language model has not really seen the data, the, the underlying data. So for example, if you've got documents, uh, that we've not exposed to a large language model, what it can do is, using this architecture, it can retrieve the context that we embed in a vector database to play, and then we use large language model to generate information that a, um, a user questions, uh, has a question on it. Is that right, Chris? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. Um, in terms of knowledge graph, right, so we're removing that vector database where we're storing the context and yeah. implementing a, a graph database to hold the context. Yeah. So in terms of uh, knowledge graphs, right, why, if we have bra, if we have RAG, sorry, why use knowledge graph? Very good question. Um, there are many reasons why we want to use a knowledge graph instead of a baseline RAG implementation. So let's say you have a large corpus of documents, let's say contracts, that you're looking for a particular clause in. With a baseline RAG implementation, you won't be able to necessarily look between those documents and find the clause you're looking for. Whereas if we implement embed them into a graph database, we should see a node for the clause we're looking for that's connected to the, that corpus of documents. Yeah, that's true. And I think the second thing is if you've got a huge corpus of information, uh, baseline right would struggle because just because of the context of it, right, and summarize it, it would it would struggle to give us accurate information or coherent summary. 
or else if you use knowledge growth, the ability to traverse the entities and nodes, it is able to do that a lot more effectively. Yeah, definitely. Right. So tell me all about this graph right, that you've been working on for the last three months, Chris. Now it's open source. Microsoft is very exciting news that Microsoft announced a couple of days ago that it's now open source. Yeah, so I, if you notice in February, I think Microsoft Research released a paper on their graph rag implementation. Several months later, we get the open source library that they created to do that research paper. It's very interesting. Um, and they're, yeah, it's a nice step forward to Microsoft's graph rag implementation. And as a teaser, Chris, are we going to be you know looking into how we implement graph rags as well in future episodes here? Yeah, definitely. So in episode two, we're going to look at the architecture of the implementation for both MS Graph RAG, Llama Index, and Langchain. Right. And added onto that, we're going to look at how we would production like productionize that Langchain implementation. But in episode three, four, and five, we're also going to do demos of those implement those local implementations. Um, and we should see some good insights, and we're going to try and form some conc conclusions at the end. Very, very good, very exciting. Now I know I've found those blogs. And um, the GitHub repo extremely useful. But just going back into the you know why graph rag or baseline rag, that's an extremely good example that Microsoft here has has demonstrated. You know, talking about the connecting the dots, Chris, that you spoke about having that holistic view, and it shows the difference very clearly here how baseline rag performs as opposed to graph rag, where it's able to just traverse that relationship and grab the information and get it all together and give, give us a more contextual response compared to this back. Yeah, not only that, it's also able to reference those entities and relationships. So if you want to export your graph into GraphML, you could then go look at those specific entities and yeah. find those relationships. Yeah, exactly. Um, and the other one is all about um, the second limitation with baseline rag and how it struggles to understand and summarize large amounts of information. So here, well, in the blog again, what it shows is it has got a whole data set reasoning abilities. It's comparing baseline rag, supposed to graph rag, and it's pretty clear, right, how graph rag performs uh, comparing to. Yeah, it's, it's massively impressive to yeah. be able to both reference those different reports and yeah. then summarize that into a human readable output. It's, it's, it's impressive. Yeah, it is really impressive, although, and, and also, I love what you had in your blog, Chris, a talk about you know, future applications. Now, this one, you published this back in May, so before yeah. GraphRag was open source, and you had a really good indication in terms of where businesses could start implementing GraphRag. Yeah, referring back to what we spoke about earlier about the legal text corpus, coming from my legal background, I that's where my head goes first. Um, yeah. I'm thinking about different contracts, different courses. Um, the, the distinction between different contracts, which is often the case, there are usually hundreds of thousands of documents with slightly different wording or slightly different yeah. clauses throughout. Um, knowledge graph rag, graph rag is brilliant for those instances. Not yeah. only that, you could look at medical reports. So having a corpus of medical reports and looking for similar terminology between the two or yep. many different documents. Yeah, and also in financial analysis, right? In financial service industries where you've got reports, for example, you know, understanding how those reports come together when you've got huge, huge different connections. Again, or franks. Yeah. yeah, well, you mentioned fraud detection earlier. So in the fraud detection case, you would have one graph, but you would also see one entity that was an outlier, and that's yeah. where you would look for that detection. Yeah, I mean, graph, I mean, knowledge graphs has been very, very effective in terms of fraud investigation and prevention. So I presume you could use graph rights for fraud as well, really effectively. Yeah. yeah. Now, when not to use GraphRag, we spoke about all the benefits uh, that comes with GraphRag, but there are other limitations as well. So just being very practical here, if you've got a very simple, um, if you're asking very simple questions and you know in the background there's not much of an interconnection between the documents going on, would we use a GraphRag, Chris? No, uh, I think the baseline RAG implementation for very straight vertical okay. structured documents are, yeah. Right, all right. Um, what about if you have limited or well-structured data? So you have um, a data that's extremely structured and you know exactly, you know, for example, here we've shown that you've got employees and where they work in their respective departments. Will we use a graph rag or will we use no. a business rag? 
No, I, I don't think a graph rag would be applicable applicable to this situation. So if you have a limited or well-structured data, then fall back on baseline rag. And the third thing here is performance constraints. So if you have um, the need to process data real time, for example, stop trading application, or even doing a real time fraud implementation here. Yeah. Implementing graph rag might introduce in increasing latency. So that makes it all unsuitable for real time applications. Yeah, entirely. There are good steps that Langchain and Neo4j are making with their hybrid search implementation, but I don't think we're any time, anywhere near real time implementation. Just yet. Um, what about resource limitations, right? You know, building and maintaining knowledge graph can be resource intensive. Like I said before, it can increase latency. So for a small scale project, our recommendation would be to fall back on baseline rag because just graph rag, the cost in terms of implementing it might outweigh the benefits. Do you agree with that, Chris? Yeah, definitely. Spinning up your own Neo4j, Neo4j database uh, in a VM is definitely going to be a lot more expensive than just doing a normal rag implementation. Yeah. All right. So in terms of episode one, that is it. I look forward to episode two, where we'll be talking about all the different architectures of GraphRack that we have and also how we get set up. So thank you very much, Chris. You're welcome, Gary. Thank you for having me. See you soon. See you. Bye.